you want to go get some food? I'm really hungry. I'm famished. So we're gonna, we're actually gonna eat during gonna this because during this we're insatiable. We'll see how it works out. All right. This is the opposite of the gross up. This is amazing. It was really good. Yeah. Spicy too. I love it. And so if, yeah. So if this is actually a vegetarian. Yeah. This is a vegetarian only Indian place in Farmington Hills called Chutney's, right on Ten Mile. Yeah. It's right near my office. Tommy lives in Farmington also. We come here a fair amount. Thank you. Nice. Thank you Got so the, much. The no butter naan. No butter naan. The non buttered naan. You don't know no butter. <laughs> Vegan jokes. Should we um gross it up? It's the gross up for show up. Ben, Thomas, hey. Hey. Uh, so we just uh, ate some great Indian food here in Farmington Hills. Um, Chutneys. Chutneys on Must, 10 Mile. If you're in the dope. And metropolitan area. Vegetarian and lots of vegan options. Don't waste the food. Don't waste food. Shout, Shout out, out to my hunger. Damn. Shout out to my hunger. Anyway, um, so yeah, so today's episode. You had a great question. Is actually a question somebody asked me today. And I said, Thomas, this forget is what we were going to talk about. Because we had so we had, much to talk we about. We had absolutely nothing to talk about. I said, this is I what we need so to talk much. about. All right. What, do we, what is it? <clears throat> um, it was uh, asked to me by one of my coworkers. And he said, um, he said, Ben, you ever feel like you suck at your job? And I said, Angelo, four days out of five. Four days out of five? You only work four days. I know. Wow. I only work four days out of five. <laughs> So, <laughs> so every damn day. Every damn day. Um, <coughs> number one, though, I got a quick question. What do you think? Do, wait, do I? What I think? It, what your answer was? No, like what I life? think? Um, I do think you suck at your job. Um, <laughs> but no, wait. So, do you? Whatever. I have a question. Do you think that that was? Do you think he was asking you um, because he thinks that you suck at your job and he wants to see if you? No, if you he know was that asking you me because he was feeling down. Okay. And he was feeling like he sucked at his job. Oh, so it job. was like straight, legit from the it heart. It was like, do you ever? I said, like, Angie, how you doing today, man? He's like, oh, man, you ever feel like you suck at your job? And I was like. And I said, four days out of five. And Angelo, in what position is, is he? He's a salesperson. You, sales. you might know him from uh, such videos as Don't Get Screwed, Why Internet Brokers Are the yeah, <laughs> the that, Bane of Lump Sum Moving. Yeah, that was a popping video. If you haven't seen banger. Don't Get Screwed, you should. <laughs> Don't Get Screwed was a banger. Wow, this is getting inappropriate. Um, and I like it. So, no, but... It so, was. We're going to so, refilm that, by the way. So your, and your, answer, it. your answer to him was four, four days out of five. Yeah, I mean, it was a tongue-in-cheek answer. But I, I point is, I feel that t way all the time. I feel yeah. that way... I say I feel that way half the time that I work. So I, I think, like I think my answer I, I is suck. it's very cyclical, right? Because there's yeah. going to be certain... One day I suck, one day I don't suck. One day I suck, one day I don't suck. It's up and down. Hopefully... You're, you're, you're putting some days together where you feel good. I, sh I string no, I have no streak. There's no, there's no <laughs> My longest days. streak is like two and a half. Woo, I'm really getting there. On fire. Um, I know, I feel like, especially in the sales position though, it, it, there, there's gonna be those moments where you're putting in a ton of work. Especially, especially if you work for a boss that's like, well, what have you done today? What have you closed today? Oh, what are you talking to me for? You close anything today? Yeah, that's- If you're that guy, shoot yourself right now. Or just stop doing it. I mean, I don't want you to shoot yourself. I want you to. I want I guess, you to change. I guess right? I'm just more tired of that guy than you are. I just want you to change. So. I worked for one of those guys for two years. Okay, so not current. Good. No. That's why I'm glad that you. That's probably why I suck at my job now. Because I guy. don't work for that guy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I mean, you know, honestly, oh, I think God. that you know, for, my answer to that is absolutely yes. I, I do feel like I suck at my job sometimes. Um, why? What makes you feel that way? No, I mean, for me, you know, for on the sales side of things, you know, it, it, and I think that applies to any position within a company, though, but definitely on the sales side, it's very uh, evident if you're sucking at your job, or it, it can be... It's you quantifiable. Can, you can you it, keep it, score. It's very perceivable, like, that, like, if you go a couple months, that it's, it's like... Perceptible? Yeah, perceptible, my bad. Thank you. This right. is why I have him. It's very perceptible to think that... <laughs> I don't even sound right saying it. 
you, to feel like you're um, you're not doing well for a couple couple months, even if you're putting in all the work, right? And then you start doubting the work that you're putting in because it's not because you could have two good months and maybe. You didn't even really work hard in those two months. Everything just kind of happened, right? Well, it's, uh, those two months are the fruit of work you did when you were probably feeling like you sucked. So, so I mean, that's why it's, uh, I was going to ask you, how do you measure your success? Because if you feel like you suck, then it's like, well, that means that I'm not closing business right now. But closing business isn't the action that makes business close. You yeah, exactly. You don't just close yeah, business. Like, you, hey, have you... you you network, you follow up, yeah. you do needs assessments, you present, you travel, yeah. you you do a lot of things that go into that just result in closing business. Yeah, exactly. And so I think where I feel best about myself is when I am accomplishing the things that I know lead to business. Right. And it might be being at a conference, meeting a lot of people, um, it might be helping others and getting that positive affirmation yeah. and feedback, yeah. immediate gratification from that. Yeah. Um, sometimes for me, uh, one thing I did last week, which was, I was out in the field and I went to, um, do a quality check on a move mm -hmm. and I was talking to a customer yeah. and what's funny about that is like, I'm talking to a customer, this customer's already booked their move, but I still felt like I was doing something because I was talking to a customer. Yeah. Right. I it's, felt great It's a little different myself. than on your day to day. I and felt I think, great about myself. I think, um, I think just to add to that though, I think that sometimes when you're, when, when I'm feeling like I'm in a, like maybe a rut for whatever reason, sometimes it is really good just to switch it up a little bit, just like you did. And, you know, obviously do something that's productive. I mean, you can't just go, you know, rogue and then stop doing what you got to do. But if you're doing, you know, add, take something, do something that you normally wouldn't have done, but it is it beneficial to the company. Sometimes that'll help you kind of kickstart. And I felt like, you know, actually at the time, I think I told you this before that when I started doing the LinkedIn videos, it was because I, I felt like I was kind of in a rut of doing the same thing over and over and maybe wasn't like slaying the big dragon that, mm -hmm. that you're looking for. Cause I mean, th these things take time, you know, mm -hmm. there's a sales cycle that in this, in any business that can make you feel like, and you know, I don't know when this is going to happen, you know, and right. if you, if you give up at, at that moment or just change course, right. Or, or lose a strategy or whatever, and you just change a strategy strategy overnight, then you'll never re reap the real rewards of all the work that you put in. So it, is, it does help sometimes to add in a little something like go visit, you know, do an on-site visit or, mm -hmm. you know, get out there in the field like you did or make a LinkedIn video talking about whatever you're passionate about within your industry. Yeah. Um, so I think there's different ways to kind of just kind of respark that flame a little bit. Yeah. I mean, because but if you but if you look in the mirror, though, and realize, you know what, if you look in the mirror and realize you suck, yeah. If you, you got you got hard evidence. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, because sometimes, I mean, sometimes though, there are those moments within all of our careers where you look in the mirror and you realize that you may not be putting in the right work that you should be. You know, because there are moments where you do suck. I think. I think. Out. I think. I think the root of that is that you know that you could be doing more. Yeah. Yeah. Those. That's. That's the moment. If you feel like you could be doing more. And you feel like sometimes you suck. Mm -hmm. It's because you probably do suck at the moment, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and you it's know you could be doing more. But you, that's okay. And that's though. that kick in the pants. So yeah, I mean, and this is why this is why I am so up and down. Besides, like probably a chemical <coughs> chemical imbalance. Yeah, I was gonna say chemical. But um, but but I think I think one of the reasons I'm so up and down is because like on Monday I'm gonna roll in feeling like I suck and I haven't done anything for two days. And then on Tuesday I'm gonna reap the rewards of the hard work that came from the insecurity I had on Monday. Oh, and on Tuesday, I'm gonna be chilling like a villain because I've already booked whatever and done right. this and yeah. that. And I give myself permission yeah. to chill out and slack off. Yeah. And then Wednesday, I'm like, crap, I'm not doing, I'm behind. Yeah. So then I get my butt in gear and I do something. And then on Thursday, I'm feeling good about it because I'm yeah. seeing the fruits. And then on Friday, I feel like I suck again. So it's like, how do I stay nose to the grindstone and, and grind this is a good one how do you grind when you're successful so that you don't have to slip I feel like for for, mm -hmm. for me I have to look back at the things it's so simple but you know the things that I'm grateful for right I mean because the the things that I'm grateful for are the, are the reasons why I push so hard to try mm -hmm. to get to where I'm at and then if you get to a point where you feel successful and you get complacent because you got the things you need or you want, you're not really thinking about your reason in the beginning at all, right? So like whether you're in sales or 
whatever your position is. Like if you worked hard to get to that spot and then you get to that, you know, the top of the mountain or whatever and you stop, it's just because you're not really thinking about how grateful you are for that moment, you know, mm -hmm. or for that and for the things in your life. Because there is no complacency, there is no laziness if you're if you're grateful. I mean, it just is they just don't they just don't go together, right? Like if you look at like um, like Kobe Bryant, right? Um, if all the work that he put in, you know, like you would think that that at the time when he was at his peak and just really pushing hard, winning championships, mm -hmm. you would think that the people on his team would be working harder than him because oh, yeah. he was the star like he was the it right he was the one that did that made the, the game the winning happen pretty much did you see that interview with Shaq and him no I, I have seen it but I haven't seen I haven't seen it lately yeah well what he says he's sitting down with Shaq and they're talking about basically how they came together and yeah. like he was a rookie or whatever or, you know and and anyway and like how they grew together and then ultimately grew apart <clears throat> and they had won that that first championship and Shaq's like yeah 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 Shaq's, yeah I knew I, I had it. I knew I had a young buck back home that was working hard, you know, so I just took it easy. And, she, and Kobe's like, yeah, that's why I effing hated you. Right, yeah. He's like, because I knew that you weren't doing, you know, and then you right. come to camp and it takes you a month to, like, get, get, get back right, right again, again yeah, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and and Shaq was just like, yeah, I know. I'm I'm right. dumb like that, but that's how I am. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm like Shaq like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting by on my God-given talents and everything. And, yeah, I and mean, I work hard in spurts. And I show up when I need to. Right. And I, I'm dominant, but at the same time, like, I could be even better. Right, exactly. And that's what exactly. like, kills me is like, like, Ben, you could be so much better. Like, why? And why then, don't you want to just be like the best? Ba and like, then, but person? even, but even if like, let's just say, like, even if because you we we agree that you're success, you're successful, <clears throat> you know, to whatever not, extent. Not compared to Leonardo you, DiCaprio. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, but just gotta change your career. He, he's an actor, bro. Yeah, I just want acting. You should. You'd be Wild great at it because you're doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, no, but <laughs> why does it feel like that's an insult? Like that's like a double insult. Yeah, like I think that you're doing a, great. Yeah. yeah, you're doing great at what you're doing right now. Right. Um, Go ahead. You were <laughs> saying. You know what I was gonna say. Oh man. No, but like I think that. Um, yeah, like the, that. But that whole that whole dynamic, right? Oh, the, those moments when you feel like, you know, um, that you could be going harder, you could be much better, or whatever. You could be, you know, what? even if, let's just say, like you are at maybe the peak of your performance, right? But if you feel like there's those gaps where those those days you're not putting in the right work, but you're still maintaining. Even if you fill those gaps with some with some nice solid work, you'd feel be more, you know, much much better and more. You wouldn't feel like you suck as much because there aren't those ups and downs. There's no guessing whether you could be better or not. As I think that when I feel the worst about my life or a situation or or work is when I question whether I'm putting in what needs to be done. Does that make sense? I mean, the second part does, but I don't. I don't. Maybe I missed kind of the, the point of the like first so, part. Like so, I'm saying, um, if if you're putting in all the work that you can, and which you I'm know, not, and you, and you, I mean, I'm saying, but so that's if, how I know that I'm I'm not. Living up to my position. Because what, but what I'm saying is, if you start putting in all the work and nothing changes, and you continue to do what you're doing, which I think you're, in my opinion, and probably a lot, a lot of people out here, you're killing it, right? So what if you just continue to kill it at this level, right? I think about that too. I'm you'd like, feel, is this even sustainable? Can I even feel, keep doing this shit like this? But I think that because the reason why you feel like that, I think that you could, right? But I think that you feel like that because maybe there are those gaps in there. But if you fill them in, I think you would just, it would just be much smoother sailing. You can only go so high, Ben, right? You only have, um, that's, that's probably not true. I think that you only have a little bit more left in your tank. <laughs> just turn into a whole, a whole like trash in you. No, but I just I feel like, no, I just feel like if you. I do, for, I'm for, tired, man. I'm tired. Me, I've been getting like five hours of sleep at night. That's because you know, I think that you're ridiculous. What does you, that mean? you don't turn off. What? What? Okay. Okay. Like so, my my opinion, right? No, this is a totally different thing. So my opinion, right? Let's get it. I think that in order Let's for you to be as successful as you want to be, I don't think that the whole like the the old age thing of just going hard all the time, never turning off. I don't think that that's sustainable. Because, I mean, because it's just not like you just, you just said you're tired. You're only getting five hours of sleep and all that other stuff. You're not really. You spend so much time, or we spend so much time working hard to get to where we are, but then we never actually sit back and appreciate where we are. Like we don't sit back and take time away from the the work. It's constant because we have our phones with us at all times. We got emails. We got LinkedIn. We got 
everything at our fingertips. There's no moment for you to like recharge. Like you don't feel like you're ever, like you're just, it's just constant, it's too much? I do, I feel like it's constant. I feel like it's constant. I feel like there's a lot of work to be done with like all this media stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Where, you know, there's constant film editing and there's booking, you know, guests yeah, and yeah. there's Which you're crushing it promoting and working thank you. Promoting and working each post and yeah. everybody that's a guest wants you to like, up. hey, can you do a post to promote it? Because I don't wanna be, you know, on here only looking at two people watching. I'm Which like, well, gonna happen though. You promote by the way, it because by the I way, do this every day. Listen, by the way, if you go if you go if you go live with Ben, right? Here's here's the if I was a guest on Ben's on Ben's Love and Reload. Which is what, so far fetched. Here's what I would because we're sitting here right, right now. Here's what I would do if I was a if I was a guest. Yeah. I would say, Great, Friday works out perfect for me. I would say like, hey, uh, can you help me tailor something or whatever to make sure that I, I wear this correctly? I'd post it on my own page, my own Facebook, my own LinkedIn, yep. blast it out to my people. Yep. Because I know for sure, based on watching Ben's videos for any other situation, live works out. Live yeah. is great. You're gonna get immediate, you know. You're, you're gonna, gonna get. You're gonna get 50, fifty automatic. You're gonna have right? fifty to one hundred and fifty, depending automatic. on who you are, what the topic right. is, whatever. At least fifty, just just by turning it on. And after a couple of minutes, you're gonna get fifty. Yeah. But if you do the work as well, um, because you don't. What the thing you don't want though is is to for you to burn bridges by having by reaching out and doing so much promotion for everything, right? And I haven't done. Prom I haven't been promoting any of the stuff really. I mean. I think that's the way to go. You let the you let the guest do the promotion. The guest should be promoting because I'm providing the platform. Then they right. then they do. The and, but promotion. then it, but even if it's not like you know like I'm doing this, you do this. It just makes it's just nice and easy. And then you you pull in your own network into this thing because Ben's already got his network covered, right? Yeah. So just let that. Well, I think I think what I should be doing is I should probably give them like a, a, a like a little write up, like a blurb, like you were saying. Yeah, exactly. I should say here's a sample blurb. Make this your own. Yeah. Or do these tags. Do these tags here. Put it out on you know to your, you know Facebook. Day before. Boom. Morning of. Yep. Yeah, you could even share the you know the the YouTube link or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm working through it. There's just so many. But my point is like what I think is going on right now, and I, I do think I'm crushing it. I think a lot of people feel the same way. But I feel like. I'm not even scratching the surface because I don't have a logo for Love and Reload yet. I don't have, you know, a proper theme yet. I don't have like sound, you know, I wanna have music, you know, I don't have that yet. I don't have my, my bookings for a month or two out. I'm not scheduling enough of my shows, I get far enough in advance. Um, Do you feel I just like have like so many things that I'm not doing proud. I actually just bought the domain loveandreload.com. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have the domain for four weeks. People kept emailing, yo, do you not own this yet? I'm like, no, I don't. Like, you know, they're like, oh, don't make me, I, you know, don't make me buy it and monetize it. I'm yeah. like, I'll just change the name, bro. Like, threaten yeah. me with a good time, yeah. bro. I'll yeah. just launch yeah. a different I like, think name. I know exactly who I you're talking about, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, so it's like, but anyway, point being, it's like, I just think of all the things I haven't done yet. Yeah. Um, and if I were to just think about the things, like all the blessings and all the things that we have, I feel like I would just slack off. You don't do you think so? Oh, 100%. I mean, so I what, I, what sitting, I'm saying, you don't think that I would you... just be sitting on my deck, you know, enjoying my who I am and having my glass of wine and say, wow, Ben, you're, such, you're so great. You know, look at all the things you've accomplished. And then slowly and surely, it would all just, yeah, somebody else would come along that, and start doing it mean, and then like, take it away from me. I guess I don't mean like sit back on your like on your laurels, like, oh, well, I'm just, I made it. My laurels are huge right now. <laughs> I'm just sitting on them like all day long. But I mean, so so <laughs> my thing is, I think, that, well, number one, I'm obviously you have a lot to do within, you know, in this in the love and reload space right mm -hmm. but I mean that doesn't mean that you're not where you should be though you know like I'm not saying stay here I'm not saying like you're good so yeah. you're you know it's as big as it's gonna get because it's mm -hmm. not but I just feel like sometimes knowing well, you as could a friend be. it could be though because things peak things peak and then they're like you know that love and real thing was cool and when Chuck White was on it that was really neat but Ben's already interviewed all the presidents of all the RMCs, the presidents of all the associations, and all the cool tech companies. And, you know, that was cool. I guess, but I mean, I mean, there is, there is, how many times going to take a day, an hour out of my day, or an hour and 25 minutes out of my day to watch this, you know, guy go live and yeah. whatever, you know? Yeah. Someday, at some point, I got to get my work done. You know, so I think about it. I'm like, well, how much of a tail is there on this yeah. thing? You know, I don't That's know. True. You don't know. You so don't I know. worry about all that stuff, you know? And the fact that I don't have a plan for that makes me feel like, yeah, well, I do anxious. suck. I do suck at this. 
Yeah. Like I'm over here like so, you know, I mean, yes, I feel like I feel like all the time I suck at it. I was sitting in front of the camera two days ago uh, with John Zilka and, you know, it's like, all right, John, you know, we're talking about this for months. You know, yeah, we're going to do one. We're going to do one. Oh, he's going to be great. You know, whatever. Smart guy, you know, great guest, whatever. And we go live and all of a sudden LinkedIn Live doesn't work. Oh, and I'm sitting yeah, right next it. to my client and my guest and they're just like, what do you mean it doesn't work? And like, we spent seven minutes, the first seven minutes of the thing, like dicking around, like, oh, is it on? Is it on? Is it not on? Whatever. Yeah. And and ultimately, we ended up going Just, into it and doing a show for two people on Facebook that turned into five. Yeah. But uh, and then we reposted, then posted and there it was a decent, you know, was, LinkedIn, right? there was a decent explosion and everything. But my point is, like, that was embarrassing. Yeah. You know. But I mean the side of me that's smart and that's failed many, 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 many times quite publicly in my life knows that you just have to keep keep, just keep it moving. Yeah, that's, that's the best way getting. the best way to get over it is to, to do it something else, do another one. Yeah, or just yeah, or just accept the fact that it happened. It is what it is. And if you continue to just <clears throat> operate like that, then you're bound to fail over and over and over again, right? Part of me though I think part of me though thinks that like by I talk about all my failures quite often. Mm -hmm. And people's like, oh, don't get so down on yourself. No, 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 you don't understand. Like, I talk about them so that I remember that I yeah. you stay hungry. Yep. And that I remember the lesson I learned from it. Yeah. And, you know, people don't like to hear about your failure sometimes because it makes them feel uncomfortable for you. And they have a hard time being yeah. in that moment. Because yeah, I think you. so many people, though, can <clears throat> talk about their failures or complain in a very. Um, what was me? Self pity. Yeah, yeah, it's not like yeah. not in a constructive sense to say like, yeah. hey, well here's here's what I, I started this company and then like bombed, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, it is. But yeah. like, if you're taking it as like, I'm remembering what happened. Yeah, it's a great and I've story. From it. Cool story. I totally bombed. Crazy. It <laughs> crazy. was amazing. The worst best thing ever. Best thing ever happened. I was to me. sitting having a beer with a guy a few days ago, and we were talking about the time that he bombed. And he presented. Oh, like and, oh, like at a client. And he just totally blanked, and he just couldn't get it back. And it was just oh, the like, most like epic like, bombing he like ever. A, like a comedian on stage. Yeah, just, but it wasn't. But it wasn't a comedian. It was like a work thing. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean, and dude just bombed, you know. And I could tell. I could still tell. He said he was over, but I could still tell it was kind of raw for him. Yeah, cause that's tough. And I said, listen, bro, you gotta be able to tell this story with a smile on your face and laugh at the end. Because otherwise, it's always going to haunt you. Yeah. Yep. yep. You know, and so um, part of I think like, do you ever feel like you suck at your job? Is to admit, like, here's yeah. where where I'm sucking. Yeah. Here's where I'm grossly underperforming. Because if your answer, if your answer to the question is uh, that you don't suck at your job, or you never feel that you way, you never feel that way. You're li you're lying. You're lying, or, or, or you don't care, or you think it's your truth, and you're just lying to yourself because. How can you possibly get better if you don't realize that you suck at certain Or things? your standards are too low. I, I, so I, I used to manage a lot of people. I don't manage anybody now. But I used to manage a lot of people, and we do performance reviews, mm -hmm. right? And inevitably, there's half the people, if given no direction, will give themselves all five out of five in every category. Or for the most part, they're not. They're, they're, they're not doing that. And I they're say, not doing that because they believe it. They're doing that because they don't want. It's hard for people to write down a number that a number three or two, knowing that their manager is going to see it, dude. I think. Come on. No, I think. I think they believe it because no. when they come in, they do all their work that day, and it gets all gets done. So why wouldn't they be a five out of five? So then I have to sit down, I have to tell them, listen, you think you're a five out of five. Let me tell you, let me show you what mine looks like. Mm -hmm. And I've got all like twos, threes, one, I got a couple of ones. Right. I got some four, I got a five. You know, but I'm like, I'm like, a, I'm like all over and like mm -hmm. brutally honest with myself. That's, most people are not. And I'm like, listen, this is mine. Mm -hmm. This is yours. You're amazing. I'm the, Director VP, I'm Ben Cross. Right. I'm not trying to toot my horn, but I'm me, and I know who that is. Yeah. And you, this is me on paper, and yeah. you're a five. So what are you like, Elon Musk or something? Exactly. Exactly. Like, what are you? Who are you and right now? You're and Michael and Jordan. If you, if you hold up, I'm killing it, and this is me. Yeah. And if you hold up Elon Musk's yeah, thing, yeah. his isn't five. His ain't five. fives either. You know what I mean? Like, I shouldn't have smoked that so, weed on that thing. <laughs> so right. 
I shouldn't have smoked weed on, on national <laughs> or like YouTube or whatever it was, right? So, so, so then, so what I tell people is I was like, listen, my whole point in saying this is not to make you feel bad. It's to say I want you to think bigger for yourself. Oh my gosh, bro. Like, because are you trying to be like, like head of the mail room or are you trying to be head of the company? And, and okay, and let's just jump, let's, let's keep going with that. It's like, so as a manager though, right, I think that sometimes it's hard it's like the only way that I can convey my message typically is by being brutally honest about myself, right? Mm -hmm. You get those, there's there's that type of manager that you are where you show like blah, 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 but then there's those other managers out there, right, that make people feel like they have to put fives because they're gonna put fives on their own, right? Ben Cross is gonna put all fives on his because in my mind, I think Ben is doing a great job, right? So when I go into this, this, this interview or this review, He's gonna his is gonna say all fives and mine damn well better say it as well. And I can justify a bunch of fives because I did my job. Right? Or my manager's gonna look at this and give me a, a five percent raise because I gave all, myself all fives and he's not and gonna And maybe actually, he agrees. And maybe yeah, maybe. And if, and or if I don't give myself fives, why would he? Yeah. So like I better yeah. give myself fives because I know he's gonna ratchet me down to threes, but if I give myself threes and I'm gonna be ratcheted down to a one I'm not gonna get a marriage. I mean, but that's know, that's where I want. Increase. That's where I want to work. I want to work somewhere where my manager will be completely open with me about their performance. Maybe not like down to the you know specifics, but just say like, hey, you know, I could be doing better at this too. Or when I was doing your, you know, when I was in your position, I failed at these same things too. And here's how I worked through it, mm -hmm. right? I think that like people that feel like they suck at their jobs every now and then, number one, that's like is more natural than anything that we've ever talked about. Like you have to feel like you suck at something in order to try to get better. So embrace that yeah. suckage. And, right? and admit when you're admit when you're having a tough day or a problem. With Nobody something. does that. Not enough people oh do that. Oh my god. Nobody dude, one does of my that. biggest pet peeves is like, hey, oh, say how it, are you say doing? It, say it, say it. How are you doing? Know, living the dream. Who's living the dream, bro? Ain't nobody living the dream, man. Okay. I don't know nobody living the, I mean I'm I mean I'm living a dream, but it ain't like It ain't the, the dream. dream. I mean, yeah, who's living the dream, like man? Bill no, Gates is no, probably living no, the dream. When you hear somebody say let me tell you something. When you hear somebody next time you hear somebody say living the dream, I want you to listen to it. And when they say living the dream, you know what that's code for? I hate my job. I hate my job, having a bad day. Um, living the dream is I hate my job, my life sucks. That's what living the dream means. Because it's always, sucks. it's always meta, it's always like, um, it's always sarcastic. Yeah. It's always sarcastic. If I say, I mean, now if, if you talk to somebody, living the like, dream, man, and like, they always like, roll their eyes. Like man, like if somebody, no, they or, or, say I'm living my best life. They say I'm living um, my best life. I'm, I'm doing what I always was meant to or do. We, or I'm so blessed. Or they, people that are really, really feel like they're living the dream more than anything want you to feel like that too so they're like i'm doing great how are you doing like they how switch are you doing like, yeah i'm doing great man like what's how are going you on doing? your world Tell how can i help it. you yeah. right people that are living the dream aren't like saying i'm living the dream yeah. you know because they or try to tell, tell you them, like yeah. people that are living the dream will tell you that they're having a bad day like oh man. yeah oh man people Damn. ask me how i'm doing and i'm like yo today is tough yeah, today sucks. I'm getting a little my bit. ass kicked right now. Yeah, yeah. Like I got A, B, C, D, E, F, G that I have to get done. And it's not a noon, bad thing, man. or else I, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, and people, you know. Anyway, I think that the answer to this for people, this is a tough question. <clears throat> have you ever sucked at your job? Because the answer, the answer, which is the true answer, is yes. It comes along with so it's so loaded though. Like you feel like if you admit that you suck at your job sometimes, or just being you suck at being a person in general, mm -hmm. like it feels like you just. Like giving away like like all your ability to if do. If you tell better. people, sometimes I feel like a bad father. I feel like a bad dad like all, all the, time. the time. Yeah, and I then know. other people will tell me like how great I am, but the fact that I feel like a bad father sometimes makes me want to be better every day. You know. I was talking to a guy and he was like, "Yeah, I used to be into, um, you know, I really used to be into like all these high end liquors." Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I was working my, my normal job, and then uh, at night I was going to these liquor tastings, and then on the weekend I would load up my car and I would drive down to Kentucky or Louisiana, and I'd go to these liquor festivals Bro. at least once a month. No kids, right? And he's like, he's like, and it's not like I was a bad dad. What? And I'm like, no, you were being a bad dad. You, yeah, you, that's yeah, yeah you exactly. Were. No, just can you, you just say like, yeah, like I was putting like my passion for booze in front of my family and children mm -hmm. and I've recognized that and I've grown from it because mm -hmm. if you say it's not like I was like no bro like you, how are you ever going to learn from that yeah. if you don't admit like first steps admit you got a problem right exactly. like, admit that this is 
getting in the way. Or say, you know, I know it's getting away. I'm sacrificing. I'm knowingly sacrificing my relationship with my children and my wife and, for, or, or whatever else yeah. and whatever else for this hobby. Right. So, and so like in this industry, moving and storage and, and relocation, a lot of us kind of suck a little bit at being parents in the summertime. The, I mean, yeah, in the summertime, yeah, yeah, great. we get we get in the peak season. I yeah. mean, it, depending on your position, it kind of sucks, right? And because you're you're working ex you're working longer, you come mm -hmm. home maybe with a little chip on your shoulder, and you got to unwind or whatever. Yeah. You, um, yeah. it we just get, happens. Like, in yep. in in the point is like, you're okay, you know what? Next summer, I'm gonna try to do something a little different. I'm gonna do something mm -hmm. better. Or if you're just like, no, I'm I'm crushing it. I, I come home every day and sit on the couch mm -hmm. and watch TV. Mm -hmm. And my kid says hi, I say hi back, and then they go to bed. Mm -hmm. That's not being a good father, or not not being a good parent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you sometimes have to just like, hey, look yourself in the mirror, figure this thing out, and move on to the next thing. And I hate to like bring up the Kobe Bryant thing because, but it's just, I mean, it's just kind of, so, it's so fresh. The reason why I was so affected by the whole thing, number one, I was a fan, but number two, seeing him go from being like that parent that knowingly probably wasn't a great dad. I mean, as, as good as a dad How, he could You can't have been. be, right? You can't push that hard, practice I mean, that long. you're playing a hundred and something games You're setting a, year. a good example of how to be dedicated and push and, and all that stuff, I mean, to a certain extent, right? But then as soon as he retired, though, then he, all that focus, all that Mamba mentality drive, switched it 100% to his kids and his family. And you saw it. Yeah. And yeah, that's what- He started that, coaching his daughter. Yeah, he, never, his daughter. he never went to any more Laker games. Like, And if he did, he was with his kids. Right. And his family. And the only thing he was doing was that show I think he was doing um, where he was analyzing some of the games. Yeah, but and then, you know, like, but just imagine, house, like, how busy they are yeah. by themselves anyway. So yeah. you can do so, anything. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I agree. And that was the part of I was most excited. It's funny you said because that was exactly where I was with it, too, is, like, I was most excited about the fact that he was being this family guy, yeah. you know. And, um, and it and made then, me feel like a bad dad, actually. Because you you didn't have a helicopter at well you're not 41 yet so I, I got you time. still got some time I got time to grab me pull this together you know, we to do like you know we'll do we'll do like one of those ride share things where yeah. we split it we'll half on a yeah half on a half on a heli but I mean like no but I mean like just watching some of the things as to how much like how involved he was like I mean I coached my daughter's yeah. basketball team too I mean so I mean but that's not like but just how how good he, it seemed like he was with them and I just wanna you know I wanna be around and be you know be busy show them a good example of what we do i have always said that i'm working my ass off right now so that by the time my kids are you know in soccer or you baseball can where i can be a coach yeah and i can i can call my shots and say you know what today i'm, I'm bouncing at four o'clock because yep, yep. i got a game or you know we're going to take a three-day weekend to go on some tournaments or but whatever you have to know that that's the, the your goal you know because there's so goal. many people though will push for that and then get to the, the level of success and, and never remember the time they felt like they sucked as a parent and they'll keep going. <clears throat> when I get there, I'm going to have to then delegate and, and bring people up under me to. that can actually manage the business, Yeah, you know, and, and, and develop them. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's challenging. It's really challenging. Um, but I, one of the things, you know, talking about kids and family and stuff is like that I've been dealing with lately is like... <clears throat> We think about like legacy and like what are we trying to accomplish? And I, mm -hmm. I think about dying all the time, mm -hmm. and it's weird because I heard started hearing Gary Vaynerchuk talk about this. Also. Oh yeah, like he, he thinks he about thinks the worst about, thing possible. The worst thing possible every morning, scenario. and that's and when he wakes up, and that's how he goes. He lives his life basically as if something just happened, and he needs to to love so deeply and everything. Me, I, I, similar but different. I, I think about dying like if I die tomorrow, mm -hmm. like I want. I want I'm just gonna be really candid right now. Okay. Like I I think about my funeral mm -hmm. all the time. Do you? And I envision like, it. And I'm like, who's gonna be in the room? Are you being like hundred percent right now? Yeah, I'm like about to cry. Okay. I'm like, who's gonna be in the room? What are they gonna say? And are a lot of people gonna be there? Or just like a couple of couple of people gonna be there. You know? Mm -hmm. Um I want I wanna have a amazing funeral mm -hmm. with a million people there and I want them to all come up to my kids and tell them what a great man I was yeah. and the impact that I had on their lives mm -hmm. and I want my kids to always feel like that's the standard yeah. I want to be the man that I want my kids to be yeah because I mean you know what's funny is I mean 
we are destined to follow in our parents footsteps even when we knowingly don't want to we still tend to gravitate towards them subconsciously and so for me it's really important to be that role model for my kids so that I say hey who do I want my kids to be I better be that person yeah because I'm imprinting this on them right now yeah I mean I I, I agree with that 100 percent you know because my father died when he, when I was when I was eight he was 39 of a stroke right oh. and in the fact that you said like you know you you knowing you know for sure the the direction that they took wasn't the right way to go but you just jump right in full force anyway and that's what I did like I was pretty much everything he was probably doing I was doing it maybe times three or whatever right and three years ago I decided like you know that just can't happen um, I didn't I don't think about my fu my you know my funeral you know I don't go that deep into it but then I could see just in you talking about it like and I started thinking to myself like how deep of a connection you would feel to that or how deep of a drive that that would instill in you to continue to keep going I hate the word like I like the, the, the term YOLO you know like you only live once I love it, but then people use it in like the weirdest way. Like, oh, I'll, like they do I'll the go, opposite. I'll go buy like uh, something that I know I'm not supposed to because you only live once, right? It's not about only living once, so you just get to do whatever you want to do. It's, it's you only live once, or you only can. You, you, it's, a, it's all about the moment. Make sure that you are doing at this moment everything you can do to be your, your best self, because you don't know. Like, you can't just go, oh, I'll do that tomorrow, or I'll do that next month, right? You do everything you can do. Spend time with your, as much time with your family as you can and somehow balance putting in the most work you can at, at your job to make sure that they're taken care of and, you're, and you set yourself up for some type of legacy, you know, on that side of things as well. You just have to live every moment like as if the other people in your lives depend on that moment forever. You know, like, cause I don't want to like die, right? And then, I mean, I, you know, I don't know what you're going to know after you die, but I wouldn't want to think about dying knowing that maybe not the last version of myself that my kids know was kind of whack you know mm -hmm. like like oh like he was cool but you know whatever I want them to remember like this amazing person that that like just kept pushing kept you know stayed dedicated to what he believed in and whether I was right or wrong they can latch on to that somehow and and when you're that great of a person that greatness echoes across generations in your family it, they live so off in that. my family my grandmother Moselle Cross was that that person who was just almost deified in our family because she was such such a great person I, I talk about her sometimes but I think about her all the time and she just gave so limitlessly to people and defended people that couldn't defend themselves and help people that couldn't help themselves and put other people ahead of herself mm -hmm. so selflessly and was such an amazing um, godly woman and you know that she's been gone now for I don't know, probably seven years, maybe. <clears throat> and she informs so many things that I do, mm -hmm. and um, and 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 she, you know, she's she informs, you know, she she has inspired, you know, the way my dad lives his life. She's probably the way I live my life, and therefore now is inspiring the way my kids yeah. are going to live their lives, hopefully, and. And and like to, you can have that kind of an impact yeah. in your own family. You can have that kind of impact in your world yeah. and in your industry. Yeah. You know, I I I love winning awards and stuff because I they not because I like to collect the award and like I, it's because it signifies that I've made an impact. You know, and the people are acknowledging, which means I've made an impact on them. Yeah. And and you know when I go to ERC, you know, and I see these Hall of Honors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, and these yeah. guys get up and they yeah. are, and women, right, get up and they like, and they tell these stories, you know, and you're like, wow, you've been doing this for thirty years. And and, and, years. and then just to jump in there though, because like when I see like those Lifetime Achievement Awards at like AMC and ERC and all that stuff, I mean sometimes like you're sitting at a table with eight people, right, and they all <clears throat> you're all going to the same thing, right? You're all looking at the same person talk. You're looking at the same video highlighting this person's achievements and things and then you, you, you could be maybe only two of the eight really are connecting with this with this moment and I think that you and I would be the same person sitting there like locked in on what this what they're talking about oh, yeah. seeing the other people tell stories and how they've affected their lives mm -hmm. and all these great things and it it's not like I want okay I really want this award sitting on this table but I want to I want to know that because there's so many people who've been in this industry and many industries that worked 30 plus years and just get their 
just retire and they're gone, right? Mm -hmm. And that's fine, right? But I want to be, I want to make sure that people know that that I was here and I left a mark on something, you mm -hmm. know, in the, in the most positive way possible. Yeah. Like, because if you can, if if I know you for however long I've known you, and you don't think of, of me in any way other than just like, oh, that's Thomas, and we do the gross up and we eat together and that's it, and you walk away. If I've had no impact on your life, then I suck at my job. Mm. As a human being, you suck at your mm. job if the people in your lives aren't so impacted in in, a, in some positive mm -hmm. way, you know. And if everything in your in in you is just to, you, it's a transactional take I give to you, you you know, it's just a transactional thing, then you're you're not living you're not living your your best life, and you're not living the dream by far. If you're not giving well, to people, well, and you know, so I'm, I'm listening to what you're talking about, <clears throat> and you use the example of when you're at the conference and you're sitting at the the banquet table. And there's eight people there, and mm -hmm. two of them really give a damn about what the person's saying on stage, and six of them are not. And I'm trying and to break a crouton <laughs> with a fork, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> playing that crouton. Push the crouton. <laughs> Sorry to break that up for you, bro. And, uh, and, and but but I no, but I think I think that the fact that you're sitting there and you're engaged with your mind and your heart in the moment mm -hmm. and you're looking at that person and you're absorbing it and you're fully present, you know, I think that shows up, that same commitment and that same engagement shows up in all the things that we do yep. if you're that kind of person. And so I think it's important if you don't, kind of going bring it full circle, if you don't want to feel like you suck at your job, make sure you're fully engaged with your mind, body, and your heart and I think you will reap the rewards that tell you you're, you don't suck. Yeah, because if you are if you are leading your life in every day with your in your job with your mind, body, and heart, then you'll know to your core that what's happening right now on the outside is in no reflection of of you inside. Well, yeah, when you follow when you follow yeah. your when you follow your plan for yourself and what you know is right, yep. your your inner voice, your inner urgings. There's gonna be a lot of people in your life that are gonna tell you that's ridiculous, yeah, that's right. stupid. Don't dream so big. Don't, you know, don't act so audaciously. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't think that you could pull that off. Or what's the point? Yeah. Well, you know, is it worth is it? Is it worth it? And and but you have to follow that. Yeah. That inner voice. Yeah. Like so, I hate, like I always hear people say like, you know, don't let um, external things that have uh, external things cannot affect your internal don't let external mm -hmm. things infect affect your internal right I mean, that's so mm -hmm. if because if you know for sure in your heart that you're doing everything you can right your, your sales you're doing you're making the calls you're studying your craft you're whatever you got to do right you're getting prepped you're getting ready you're, you're organized you're ready to go and it's just you're just not getting that sale that doesn't mean and then but you know if, if you've done everything if, if you've, you've done prepared, everything and you continue to keep moving and keep right. you know trying to get better it's gonna happen. You'll be. It'll be fine. You can live with the results. Yeah. No, because you know, prepared. You tried everything you could try. You know that for me is like classic, um, like an RFP situation. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. lose. I don't lose many RFPs, but I have. But if I feel like I've put together the best damn package, that's the best feeling. Sending that, sending that thing off. And then you don't win it. I mean, this happened with NCAA. I've been on the NCAA business, mm -hmm. and it was like ten moves. It was ridiculous. I remember you went through a lot to get. And I went through so much. I went. I went and visited them like twice. I want to say, I must have been fun though. I mean, not really. No. You don't like meet John Wooden, like you just walk into a nice building and yeah, yeah. you know some good art and everything yeah, around. Yeah. But but yeah, I mean, it was like kind of I wanted to win, and I went through the whole RFP process, and I put together like an enormous document or whatever. Yeah. And. And I did the donuts, and I gave them the toy trucks, oh, and I wore my suit, and I, I did my background. I knew where they all went to college. Like yeah. I mean, I did my homework, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. <clears throat> and they went another direction. I, don't think, I think they might have chose two minute truck or something ridiculous. But what you walk? You, what you walk? I walked away, feeling? away, and I was like, I did everything I could do. Yeah. And I feel so, good about that. And you didn't feel like you sucked, just because that didn't happen. I mean, you might have thought, no. like, dang, that sucked. That no, sucks. No, I honestly, I, I felt bad for them because I, exactly, I put the package exactly. in front of their face and they just didn't, they didn't know what to do. So, Angelo, right? Yeah. If you feel like you suck at your job, look yourself 
deep in the mirror and decide whether you're putting in the right work. If you are, and you in and you you're doing everything you can to do, get better, to improve, to stay engaged, to really be in what you're doing, then number one, the results will come. Number two. Just keep on pushing. Well, it's a preparation thing, right? Yeah, to your point, it's like, okay, there's a, there's two feelings, right? You're either getting dragged behind the truck yeah, or yeah, you're driving yeah. the truck. Yeah, yeah. And if you prepare, you're driving the truck. Yep, if yep. you fail to prepare, you're being dragged behind the truck. And that feels like you're doing, it feels like you're working really hard, too. Yeah, you're you working really hard to stay alive. You yeah. can drive yeah, behind yeah, the truck yeah. feels and like you, a lot that, of work. And that's, that's like that But it's not productive. Work. Yep, yep. Exactly. Driving a truck is pretty easy. And then you, and then when you write, then when you do your review, you're writing all fives because you've been getting dragged behind that truck for a while. Yeah, you, you feel like you're, I'm still here. I'm End working year, hard. I'm working, working hard. so hard. It's like, but yeah, I like, used to work. I used to work. I used to work at a company uh, where the, where the CEO was always talking about. Uh, he wanted people to run through a wall for him. For you, bro. He wanted people to run through a wall. I'm like, I'm like, and I was always make the joke to my friends. I'm like, well, he does realize like you could. You know, go around the wall. You could get a ladder, go over the wall. You could dig a tunnel. You could right, like build a door frame in the wall. So like, wait, why we so got a white? Like, why we? What do we prove when we so run you through? Run, it? You run through the wall, and then does he walk through the, the hole that you made? <laughs> yes, I think that Is he that just strolls. He's like strolls through this lovely hole. Well, would you look at that? There's well, a hole in the wall. Happens to be a hole that here. Happened. Let me walk through it gracefully and take all the credit. Or you can strategically <laughs> become prepared. With the right tools and yeah. make it and, and make a damn door. Yeah. Now what I do is I build a door. Yeah, we we'll build a door. And then I keep the only key to it. Exactly. And then I say, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Could you open this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll see you on the other side. Yeah, oh, the, you want the, the key? The year in review. Oh, the key. The key costs. Yeah, that key. Yeah, year the key in review. Is an expensive key. Man, but yeah, we all suck at what we do. Sometimes. We all feel like that um, sometimes. I mean, and sometimes you just do. And the key so is to prepare. Do, fix it. Get your ass to work early. Yeah, man. Get ahead of things. Yeah, you know, prepare, do the work, and you'll, you'll turn around yeah. for sure. Yeah, and then it's like you said, though, I think the key to this whole thing is being brutally honest with yourself. Yes. Yes. Own your failures, and your successes will come. That's a good one. Write mm -hmm. that down. Yeah. Wait, how are we going to do it? Wait, one side to the other? How does it go this go. way? No, it goes oh, this way. Yeah. No, no, no. That's what backwards. Country are we? No, I'm saying, but when I edit the video, it's oh, it's this way. It starts here. Yeah, I think we're okay. looking at. So yeah. what are we talking about? What is it called? Own, own your failures, and your successes will come. He said it first. He wrote probably it. not first. He wrote it. Yeah, I edited it. <laughs> so I, so he, might, he might take full credit. I might just switch this around. Just walk, he might just walk through a, a hole in the in the wall that I created. Yeah, and just, take, and full just credit. take full credit. I like this. I like this. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This one got way per, more, more personal than I thought it would. But I like it. That's why we always take it there, and I think that's the difference between what we do and what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. Is we take it. We take it personally. We take it there. All right. Love you, man. Love you too, bro. Peace out.